Hey everybody, welcome back to the Old Swedes Farm. It's Rich. I'm going to tackle a topic today that I've been asked a whole bunch about, and that is our cattle panel arch. Um, a lot of you've seen it in some of our other videos. This is what we call Tomato Alley. Um, it is, uh, what is it? It's about 40 feet long. It is, I'm six feet tall, so I don't know, six foot three tall. Um, it is made out of 10 cattle panels and the cattle panels are 16 feet lo uh, long and four feet tall uh, when you lay them on their side. Now we've got them vertical so um, I'm going to just run you through how we did it and why we did it that and hopefully explain some of the shortfalls if you do it other ways. Um, this was incredible last year. We had two foot spacing on our tomatoes on each side. And so we had 40 tomato plants and they grew all the way to the top. Um, they were up here and continued to arch over with the fruit hanging down. It was incredibly easy to harvest. Uh, it was incredibly easy to prune, to watch for uh, like hornworm and some of the other things that attack uh, tomatoes. But as far as just a great place for tomatoes to grow, A+. Plus. Um, and I know we're looking to possibly make another one or something similar to put squash on, uh, cucumbers, beans that grow really tall. Um, it was just a winner. So what did we do? Let me, uh, thought I'd do this before we got plants on it so it's easy to show. What we did was we put uh, rebar in and I got three foot pieces of rebar and pounded them in you can see pounded them in about every two feet uh, probably two feet into the ground and a foot up in the air uh, or above ground not up in the air um, I then wired them wired the cattle panel right to the rebar um, at the top and at let me show here's some good at the top and at the bottom. You can see where I wired it um, on there and really made it solid. Um, there is an overlap. The cattle panel at the bottom of it has smaller spacing for the first two and then it goes a consistent spot. I overlapped it by one length as best I could, one length of the smaller size here. Um, and I'm not sure if that's like four inches or something, but let's just say it's four inches. So there's about a four inch overlap. I then at the very top, and for some reason I didn't cut them, but I used metal zip ties at the top to hold them together. On the other side, just for additional strength, um, we put it right up against the fencing, the outer fencing on our garden. And so there's a couple of spots where I've got it wired right to the rebar and I've got it wired to the fence for additional strength. Now I just did it down low on the fence. I see as I'm looking down a couple of spots that it's, uh, I did wire it a couple spots up high and down low. Um, one thing you're going to encounter with something like this is wind. This uh, on its own has some wind load. Um, when the wind hits it, it hits it and can move it. Um, when you add tomatoes or other vegetables on, on this uh, trellis, um, the wind load increases. If you I've seen people put up something like this with one or two cattle panels and they put it about four feet apart. You know, pretty, pretty thin and it's quite arched. I think what happens there when you get the wind load, unless you support it up high, you get this whipping motion. Um, let me see if I can show that. When this catches the wind, you'll see it can move and it does move in a, in a pretty good wind. The whole thing moves, but because it's 
got a wider base, a six foot base, that wobble is just a little, it, it, it wobbles just a little bit. If you've got it thinner, thinner, um, that top can really, can really whip back and forth versus a, a wider base. So I think that's something to look at. Keep a wider base. You know, who cares if you're gonna put it seven feet in the air? Um, you know what, the, the plants are gonna grow the same height, um, whether it's six feet in the air or seven feet in the air. If you can give it a wider base, they'll still grow the same length, but you won't have as much wind load. Um, the rebar in the ground is huge, just for solidifying it down there. Um, we also put uh, garden fabric on the ground, uh, two three foot runs the entire length of it. That way I'm not weeding in the middle of it. Um, we just dig it up uh, along the, you know, along the base. There's still about six inches or so. Dig that base in um, and put the plants there. You can um, dig them in well. You can fertilize them. You can water them real well. This uh, garden fabric um, that I've got in another video um, is real easy to maintain. It's porous. Um, but this is just low maintenance as far as weeding, watering, fertilizing. Um, and then this just is held together really well. I'm looking forward to having, not having to construct it this year, just use it. So we're getting ready to put our tomatoes out. Um, this is an awesome tunnel uh, for whatever you want to use it. Uh, like I said, I'd like to uh, put up another one for squash, stuff that doesn't need to root every place that it puts a, uh, a bloom or a, uh, a leaf. Uh, there's some squash that puts a, a root down every one. The ones that don't, uh, acorn squash, some of that, I'd love to get them vertical. But for tomatoes, cukes, beans, stuff that's going to grow high, I'd recommend this. Um, if you've got any questions, I'll move in here. Uh, if you've got any questions, let me know. Uh, if you wanna see it in action, look at some of our videos from last summer, some of our garden uh, videos from last summer, and you'll see the, the uh, tomatoes were, you know, eight or, eight or nine feet. They'd start growing from one side, grow all the way up here and over the other side and all the, the fruit hanging down. But if you got questions, put them down below. Um, if you've done something similar and maybe have a tip that I haven't uh, jumped on, let me know. Otherwise, this is a real winner. Um, let me know if you got questions, everybody. Thanks for watching. Hope this helped. Take care.